Hello, I'm Derek Wheatley and welcome to episode 29 of the Weekly Weekly Podcast. Um, as always, thanks very much for your support. Uh, we've got a few more um, people on Facebook during the week and as always, like your shares um, on Facebook and Instagram, things like that have helped us an awful lot to get more people involved and uh, and thanks to the people who have actually commented on videos and things like that because it's uh, very heartwarming for, for myself and uh, old John. And... Uh, Thank you very much, of course, to Shane Rafferty for last week's episode. Really enjoyed it. Good feedback as ever. I'm um, still doing the Facebook Live. That's on a Sunday now instead of a Saturday, in case you didn't uh, hear about that already. And one last thing before we go. Um, Discord. We're, we're still doing the Discord thing. If you want to get involved, uh, just message me or John on Facebook and we'll get you an invite. If you don't know what it is, it's just essentially a place to kind of have a chat. Like That's all. Um, talk. I talk about films and books and things. So if that sounds boring... <laughs> leave it okay so i've introduced a returning guest uh owner and head coach at fusion training center um welcome back to martin hickey uh thanks a million for having me back you're welcome um yeah you barely got here i'll be honest but uh, um you're the actually you were our very first guest on i looked this up and uh, listened back to the episode on the 19th of february which is mad uh that was episode three has anything happened since then Ah, all's quiet in the garden, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, what, like, what, you know, what went wrong since February 19th? I couldn't, uh, I couldn't even count. Um, how have you been uh, since, just yourself, like, since I've we been, last spoke? Yeah, I've, I've been good. Um, yeah. There's been obviously a lot going on. Like, mm. you're asking me what's going on. That's funny, isn't it? Like, I'm not a scientist, Derek, so I can't answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but, uh, the virus. Yeah. but um, yeah, no, I, I, like, I think overall I'm doing well, you know, it's been it has been a crazy few months. I mean, even the week before the lockdown, and everything we're all laughing at the gym about mm. it. And I think people are making comparisons to Spanish flu, and we were telling them to take their tinfoil hats off. It's true, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were doing it like in the, I remember doing it in the warm ups and the and the warm downs after sessions, and we we all had our own little theories and things like about it. But what what were your like uh, initial worries about it? Like initially, if I'm a hundred percent honest, because we had seen like. I was in transition here for foot and mouth and we had swine flu and then there was other flus coming through and you were kind of like, ah, you're like, it, you hear about it but it doesn't really affect you, you know, mm. that kind of a, so then it's kind of, you didn't really take as much notice of it and sure, I'm pretty lighthearted, I'd not crack over everything anyways. Uh, and I just didn't really expect that this was something that was going to highly, like hugely affect my life mm. and the way it has, my business and just everything I suppose affected everybody in every way. And then you see people running and buying toilet roll. Yeah, that <laughs> like was that weird. was comical. Like. That was pretty weird. That never, like nothing ever happened with that. Like, yeah. That went nowhere. That was like a week or two, and then it just fell away. As as we all kind of expected, because nobody was hearing on the news, people are going to buy to need toilet roll for this virus because. I won't go into too much detail, but you can, you can <laughs> gather what I mean. Um, like, how far in advance, like, if at all, like, because we were getting different, like, news every day from different countries and all those things. But how far in advance um, had you started to make plans for the closure of the gym? Um, I we had talked, we had talked about it, and we had talked about, it, and when I say we, I mean myself and Heather, and we had initially said like we'll just stay going for as long, and then suddenly businesses started to close around us. And we we're kind of like, well, we're doing everything we can, and you know, like we we run a good show. People aren't on top of each other. Obviously, if we're trying to jiu jitsu and all that, there's very little that can be done, and yeah. people just need to accept the responsibility of this is what goes on. We do have um, measures in place to to like lower the chances, but there there's no elimination. I don't think you know what I mean. Now that being said, I don't feel like our country overall is doing enough to. You know what I mean? Mm. To to mitigate, to lower the chances. But uh, for the gym, we I feel like we're doing all we can given the knowledge that's available to us anyways, you know. So just to get back to the question, I suppose, really what was happening was, was other business were closing around us and me and Heather were talking as the days were going by and we were saying, look, we'll stay going for as long as it's safe to do so. Mm. And then, like, I think there was a lot of stories coming out and then I was kind of just sitting there, I was like, if one person ended up getting sick and dying because we didn't close in time, like, that, I'd have to live with that for the rest of my mm. life. Now, I know that sounds extreme now, but then it wasn't because you didn't know, like, we, yeah. we hadn't really got a clue, had we? You know what I mean? So yeah. I was like, all this mad news, and some of it is fake and some of it is real, and the virus is real, I'm not ever going to say it's mm. not. I just... Like we didn't know then and I do feel like as a country we were right to lock down because we erred on the side of caution 
at the time. Mm. So I think everyone did all the right things initially and then now we're in the aftermath of it, do you yeah. know what I mean? So, and now we're trying to get back to some sort of normality. Um, I think it was a Friday and I was talking to members and they were asking me, like, what's the plan and that? And I was, we were saying, like, we're hoping to just stay going. And then, like, there was loads of stuff happening. And on Saturday, I just, me and Heather sat down and were like, we both had the same thoughts about, you know, our responsibility. Mm. And, you know, me as a coach and me as the gym owner and all that. So I was just like, look, for right now, I think we should close. The, the actual lockdown didn't happen, I don't think, till... I think the news came on Monday and I was happy we, we didn't, like we hadn't rushed into a decision, mm. that we made a decision ourselves and I didn't want to close until we had a plan. Like I'd be very systematic about my approach to problems and issues and obviously this was just one giant problem, the biggest ever unforeseen yeah. problem probably that we're ever going to deal with. Yeah. And so I wanted to come up with a plan of like, right, what are we going to do? And my biggest thing is, is right, we can still remain coaching. Mm. So we put together the online and we over the next week or that we gave out all the gym equipment and we started putting the videos up every day and stuff like that. And and, and I didn't want to just say, listen, okay, we're finished now. And then everyone be like, well, well what are we going to do? Like, yeah. you know, so I needed to have a, a plan in place. So within 48 hours of kind of like coming up with the initial thing, we had decided to tell people, okay, we are going to close, but this is what we're going to mm -hmm. do instead. Do you know? And, and it was, it was really well met with all the members, I have to say, you know what I mean? And thankfully you know, we have great support from the members and everybody kind of kept it going and it was a good interaction. So, uh, that probably answers yeah. that, does it? And like, because you say, like, um, when you yourself and Heather sat down, so, like, the toll it took on yourself, like, mentally, we'll say, the the responsibility that you had over the place and all these all the members that you have, um, and that pressure lay kind of on your shoulders to make it to make that decision so, like you say, someone didn't pass away or, or con uh, like, uh, contract the virus and pass it on to other people. Like, how did, like, you, how did you feel about it? Like, was it a, was it a struggle mentally for you? It's, uh, you know, you're sitting there and you're just, because we didn't know, like, mm. and I say, like, oh, it might sound extreme, but I suppose it's not, like, you know, that kind of way. Like, yeah. I still have people saying to me, look, that they live with a grandparent or whatever, so is it okay if I put them away from mm. other people? And we're here to help with all of that, so I feel like at the time, it was, it's something that, you know, as we said, I'm, I'm pretty lighthearted, but now we have a really, really serious decision to make mm. for people's safety. And I feel like we made the right decision. And I wouldn't have come back, even though I said we could come back, if I didn't feel like we were being safe. If mm. I thought, you know, we were at risk. And people probably, you know, I maybe even in, since the virus started, they probably see a different side of me because I'm always harping on about keeping away and don't leave your mats and blah, 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 blah. But I just, I'm honestly just doing the best that I can for everybody. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, you're an adult and I'm an adult. So if you decide to walk over and have a chat with someone, I, I'm trying to remind you, you know what I mean? But everyone has their own responsibility mm. as well, you know, that kind of way. So, yeah. Um, it is. It was tough because mm. it is a lot of responsibility. Like I'm not a parent, yeah, but that yeah. the kind that's the kind of decision that they face a lot as parent as a parent. You know mm. that kind of way where you're like you have people underneath your you're responsible for them. And what if something goes wrong? You know that kind of that's something you have to live with. And I'm happy with the decisions we've made. Mm. And like I'm sure I think later on in years to come, all the analytics will come out about the virus and. The, the less people you know what I mean we mm. just say like there was a massive there was like numbers were coming every day but when we find out how many people less died of the flu how many people less died of pneumonia how many you know all these mm. kind of things I don't think the numbers will be half as high but I still feel like we as a people all made the right decision yeah. to err on the side of caution and I do feel like the country itself did what it should be doing I feel like we we did what we're supposed to do and if there's a letdown now I feel like the government should have had more stuff in place mm. you know uh, we talked about him before but Kieran my coach he flew to Iceland mm. and he got tested when he got off the plane yeah. and then he goes to his hotel room and then he gets notified whether he passed or failed and if he passes he's allowed to go do what he's supposed to be doing over there What I don't understand why we're not doing that why yeah. can we not uh, attach that that testing to the price of the flight I know people aren't you know what I mean you could have two weeks where you're actually alright but that being said, it's better than doing what we're doing, which is nothing. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I, I think the travel thing is a, is is it's it's probably my only problem with what they've done. It, it's look when you're in a position where um, you've you've never seen this before, like the government would say, or or anybody like yourself in the gym or whatever it is, like uh, you haven't seen it before. It's very difficult to make all of the right decisions because you're kind of um, you know stumbling around the dark a little. Yeah. Bit. 
But you're right when I like I'd agree with that whole thing about when people are traveling into the country from other places. That seems like the the one thing you should be covering. Yeah. You know, and uh, I didn't actually know that about Iceland. Like testing yeah. when I got the plane, but it, you know, uh, I haven't. When saying that, I haven't heard anything about Iceland when it comes to the problems. Yeah. So that you know, obviously, is part of it. I think we've handled it very well as a, as a country. I when you look at the absolute shambles in other countries, mm. you know, um. But yeah, I think that's the one thing that they've really missed, it, you know, missed the mark on. We did the initial part right, mm. you know what I mean, which was kill the virus in the community. Yeah, and that's how we were allowed all reopen. Which you put, like we look at America, they've, their virus has never killed the community, and they're on mm. about reopen like it's madness. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's like we should reopen our businesses. Oh well, like this is why the death toll is so yeah. high. Like, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's weird, isn't it? Like, uh, and EQ said, when I have a problem, I mean my f my friend Karen, we're like a business network mm. so like if i have something going on it could be an app or a website or whatever it might be you know i might be thinking of a new promotion or or i actually text him multiple times in the week to mm. ask him about jujitsu but i mean we don't like we did bounce ideas off each other about what's going on with covid but at the same time it's a uh, most of the time he'll have done something and i'll be asking him or he can ask me did, how did you find yeah. that but we don't you know what i mean we're all just trying to do the best we can yeah. right now you know and I feel like I feel like we did, and as a country, we did really well. But now it's just we're at the the next part of mm. the steps, and I feel like the country is just letting us down a little bit, you know. Yeah, it's very unfortunate actually, just to mention Kieran because he is over in one of the three. He's over in Offaly, yeah. in one of the three counties, and again, it's just he he's in the position where he doesn't know what's going on now because they're a week. It must be a week and a bit. A now, week, yeah. 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 So he's another week to wait, but then of course the numbers being big uh, higher again over the weekend. I think Saturday was like two hundred or something. Um, it's just that uncertainty in in a business that must be very very stressful, and that's what I mean about asking you about that kind of those big decisions to make the 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 pressures and the stress that it can have on someone. And you like you say you are light hearted and all that, but like you're still like a human who. I know you would call yourself a superhuman or something like that, but you're, you know what I mean? You've, you've still got those uh, worries and anxieties in your head at all times. Yeah. And Karen's a really good example of stuff because, uh, when you're chatting to him, I, was, I didn't want to be ringing him because obviously I'm sure his head was just like people were probably just, I'm not going to say his yeah. head was wrecked, but I'm sure he was getting loads of phone calls about, you know, what his plan was and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, first of all, look, it was only, t it's only supposed to be two weeks. So if that's the case, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. But the second part is when you talk to Karen, he's, he's such a positive person. Like he, we I like it was just an initial uh how are you getting on mm. and then he's kind of like focusing on what he can do rather than yeah, what he can't that, do yeah, you know what good. I mean he wouldn't like abruptly end a negative conversation about something he didn't want to talk about but he just has a, a real friendly way of spinning it towards the good stuff that's mm. going on rather than the bad stuff and I think you know and it's hard to adopt that approach you know I've been out uh, training there for the last three weeks yesterday was the mm. first day back now the problem like I didn't have to take a break for three weeks. I could have done other stuff, but I was like, oh, I can't train jiu-jitsu, I can't do kickboxing, I can't do any MS, so I'll take a break. Mm. When I could be on the bike, I could be out running, I could, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to be honest, now when I train back trained yesterday, the funny thing is, is that I actually felt good for the rest. It wasn't one of them ones, yeah, you know, you take a week off jiu-jitsu and you're getting a grip on something and in 10 seconds, your grip is just like done. And yeah. oh, I thought it was going to be like that and it actually wasn't. So it was probably the rest did me some good. But I mean, if we all just focus on the stuff that we can do rather than what we can't do, you know, that kind of way. It's great. If yeah. You do that, it's great. Problem and I, I, solving approach. Yeah. It's hard that you know me. I'm like a miserable kid, like, you know, but it's very hard to change that, that outlook. And fortunately, next week we'll be having somebody on to talk about that so hopefully i can take something from that um i just want to ask you actually you mentioned it already but uh the difficulties i suppose in in an online uh the the kind of difficulties and pluses i suppose of, the, of those online classes i asked because when you're in a in in the gym with us and we've all got a weight what like a whatever it is a dumbbell or whatever and we're following your instructions but when you're do you had to write up each class for someone was there a difficulty in that for you um so the good thing was i suppose that like everybody who was taking the gear was in my mind like what we call, call like an intermediate yeah crossfitter so they knew the basics it wasn't like i wouldn't be giving out something that i'd be like oh we just said derek will probably struggle here with his back or mm. x y and z though we did say if you need to ch ch change something just to contact us because obviously we're training people are getting stiff and sore so then we'd have other parts trying to like for different parts for stretching and all yeah. that but i enjoyed it to be honest with you like it's not something that i 
like even after it's over i'm happy we did it it's not something that i'm i'm thinking oh i want to be an online trainer now either mm -hmm. but i i enjoyed the evolution of it and then i also loved coming back you know yeah. that kind of way but the videos are good crack i always were, yeah. i always knock the crack over and you I, know you did you did zoom stuff with the with the um, the crossfitters yeah yeah and then the uh, jiu-jitsu ones were funny because we could obviously interact with you and send you messages and things like that but you had heather in there she still didn't get a stripe still didn't get a stripe <laughs> which to me i think it's it's horrible no but like you know it's a very hard thing to teach online at jiu jitsu it is um, yeah you're moving people you're moving heather around you're uh, trying to get the camera into the camera yeah uh, all those things and we're asking you questions can you do this and then you have to ask well what position are you in because it's such a complicated sport in general and uh I, I, like even i i didn't have someone to practice on i just went in to kind of uh troll a little bit and have a bit of crack like yeah you know? yeah but th those must be quite difficult in the fact that you were in your gi on the mats but there was nobody else there you yeah. know nobody to roll with and uh yeah I'm, I'm, i was sitting at home in my like t-shirt and tracks bottoms with nobody to roll with and flip-flops flip-flops <laughs> the socks man that is that's fashion right there um but yeah i I, re I really enjoyed the classes i did i told you already i i wrote down two classes that didn't involve weights mm. and uh just like burpees and, and squats all those kind of things and uh i did them like two or three times a week and i loved it like i uh, did it down the room down there sweating buckets but it felt like i was still moving things that i you know all, otherwise i would have just been running which is great obviously but uh so the online classes were great so i was just interested in the difficulties of of, of writing those ones up and uh yeah I was, I was kind of thinking i should have gone in and get got a weight but i like the you know the body movements yeah like yeah. the kind of just those kind of um uh lunges all those things i quite i kind of like those kind of ones more than the weights involved you know or go for a long cycle come back and do the crossfit thing i yeah. kind of enjoyed it you know so it was fun so yeah they were they were a great like they were all you could do but it still kept you in contact with the community uh, it got a bit tough because yeah. uh, for me personally because um, we'd given out all the equipment so I ended up with really heavy stuff <laughs> oh, left in the gym and I was trying to get the workouts done and I half think maybe that that's what happened to my shoulder to be honest with you because yeah. I'd be like there's no for me anyways like because I'm not like full time crossfitter I do I do train three times a week but like it's not I, I, I a lot of it is lower intensity because it's mm. so high intensity doing the martial arts stuff so it's like usually a lot maybe some strength training a bit of rowing a bit of biking but like we had a I had a 24 kilo kettlebell oh, no. and it's a pig you know I, I could swing a 32 or whatever not like for the day or yeah, anything yeah. you know what I mean not for a full workout I wouldn't use it but the 24 like it's just like there's no easy workout with that thing you and know the what pressure's I mean? on you to n not mess up the video, yeah like so, all the time yeah, yeah. And who was who was filming it? Um, different people every different, day. Yeah. I just grab someone. Like someone could be in the gym at a certain time. I'd yeah. be like, "Hey, will you take a video of me?" Was your mum? Was your mum? My mum was there. Yeah, yeah. it's so funny because we had so many outtakes, and I give her the nod, and she wouldn't press record. Yeah, you know? it was funny, but not like thank for her to come down and that. Cause, oh yeah, because your patience, you're renowned for your patience. Yeah. As well. <laughs> <laughs> but I just give her abuse even if she does it right. So. Yeah. Ah, she loves it. But yeah. uh, listen, we're going to do a little advert for some gym or somewhere, um, <laughs> and then we'll be back. Fusion Training Centre, Monksland Athlone. A place to train in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts, and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Centre or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Centre. Train like a warrior. Very good, that one. <laughs> I like to I like to rate my own uh, performance. Well oiled machine. <laughs> it is, uh, yeah. I should know it off by heart, and I'm still holding the thing. Um, so did like when the signs that that the country was kind was kind of approaching some sort of normality. Um, did you feel any anxieties about reopening? Not about reopening, but yeah. definitely about the closing part. Like, because yeah. we were kind of sitting there, and I was like what are we going to do mm -hmm. like and you didn't really know there wasn't a lot of information about what was going to be available to us with you know who what like i think the government kind of put everything together the payment plans for people overnight and all mm -hmm. so like you didn't really know and then we're kind of thinking the same about uh, my fiance heather's job luckily hers was fully she actually got busier because the, uh, they made all these grants available for websites mm -hmm. and that which was amazing for them but like i mean there was a moment of panic when it happened and you're just thinking like 
are we going to be able to come back from this? Like, you know what I mean? Because businesses are closing and yeah. uh, and, and the fitness industry is severely affected. But I mean, when we, I was, I sat down and I thought about it and I was like, look, it is what it is if we have to build it from the ground up. Because if every single person had to cancel their membership, I'd understand, like, mm. you know what I mean? And luckily it wasn't that and we did stay going and we still stayed coaching and we had kids classes on and then we had the live classes for jujitsu and we were putting up kickboxing content and i suppose i can't thank everybody enough for showing mm. the support and you know and i was so surprised because the amount of people who come in said they loved the online stuff because you know when you didn't get to talk to them directly yeah. like oh the online stuff is amazing well done thanks a million for that and i was kind of like was it was it that was it yeah. good you know but loads of people had given us such positive feedback when we were coming back you're you are kind of like because you don't know like so i was like i had to, just like we we're saying i had to come up with right what when are we starting back what are we going to do so then we took the initial photographs to the outside mm. and like everybody was just kind of really excited about yeah. that part and then to be honest with you people just started coming in from the very get-go from the minute we were able to teach classes outside and uh, like you've been in the gym now so it's mm. like it's such a really it's it i think it's the best buzz we've ever had mm. and we've often had great atmospheres going but there's so much momentum building from everybody and every like i think people are just so happy to be back doing yeah. something as well you know what i mean yeah and i think but like that goes for for the online classes of just like i said earlier the the keeping in touch and not just with yourself but like keeping in touch with other people like you're doing the zoom classes or even if it's just myself and john and some of the other lads texting uh, into you on facebook live that was keeping in touch but yeah the relief when when we got back in I got I got to do a couple of the online or sorry the outdoor classes like and even that like people were just insanely happy to be part of it again yeah and like when so when you um you, when you when the when you knew you were opening up again the measures that you've put into place and they're they're still in place obviously uh were they all did you did you talk to Kieran about it me it? yeah so yeah. So we t I spoke to Karen yeah. uh, straight away. Me and him were kind of having back and forth about uh, what he was doing and, and I was getting ideas about what I was going to do and I was telling him kind of like what my plan was and like I don't think we're doing anything terribly different to be mm. honest with you. Uh, and I was looking at other things as well. I'm on lots of forums for jiu-jitsu gyms and crossfit gyms and you know I've seen some people doing like really extreme stuff like putting 15 plastic boxes in the gym and you carry your equipment in and i was like all right yeah. i ain't doing that you know we can maintain social distance mm -hmm. you know if people are beside each other like we'll say within a meter or two it's in passing and that's the way we're trying to keep it mm -hmm. you know that kind of way and I, I know karen's the same over there and then and then the other part is just stressing to the people and i have to say we have really responsible members mm -hmm. uh, a couple of times in the last few months since we reopened i've received messages saying look m my brother moved back from spain i'm not going to be able to train for the next while and and them coming to me about it or people saying like you know i had to go somewhere i won't be back for two weeks and i just like that kind of stuff is exactly because it only just takes one and then it's a mistake yeah. you know what i mean or and sometimes maybe if something ever happened it might be unintentional but people are so i think like tuned in to what's happening mm. and i really appreciate that because if it's just me it tends to be like martin's gonna make a big deal about everything but i think everybody knows mm. you know that kind of way that it is a big deal you know yeah you like the 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 age demographics so like from four five year olds they go right up to 60s and when we do when we do the crossfit the um the 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 kind of things you've put into place with keeping our social distance wiping everything down at the end of the class um everybody is of an age we'll say where they're a little bit more um i won't say cop on that seems harsh like yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. they're a little bit more responsible obviously. yeah uh but when we when we start i'll actually go to the kids in a minute but when we talked about the uh the jujitsu so that's full contact we know yeah, that yeah. there's nothing you can do about that we um assume responsibility assume responsibility yeah. for yourself like it like you said if you are feeling unwell and you have a sore throat or whatever it might be just ring in yeah you can't do it uh you, you're checking temperatures uh, everybody's temperatures at the door as they come in uh we're sanitizing our hands washing the gi after every class stalking people on social media to make sure they're not out of country <laughs> creep, do the creep, daily stalk creeping on know. instagram <laughs> but no we keep but it's um again that there's an there's an age where you would expect people to know yeah. better now you, the kids classes started mm. two weeks ago yeah and you obviously had to you told me afterwards but you had to speak to each parent 
to make sure that they were okay with it. And yeah. pretty much it was across the board they were. Yeah, I, I think everyone was excited. I think mm. everybody knows that we can only do the best we can all the time, you know, yeah. that kind of a... And they were asking me what measures I have, and I was, I'm happy to say we had quite a few measures of, like... Um, obviously they were doing sanitizing on the way in, checking yeah. temperatures. Then we're doing training pods. We break the mats up into two sides to limit the interaction of the entire group. Mm. So I I feel like we are doing everything we can. And to be honest with you, if if there's something going wrong, I parents are message me and saying, "What will I do if if John isn't feeling well?" Mm. Or you know, and we I appreciate their communication to me, not mm. sending thing and then arriving with John and saying, "John's not feeling well today." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I said to bring him anyway. It was like people know now. I think what's going on funnily enough i actually haven't been sick all year mm. <laughs> because of the of the lower interaction yeah, of other people yeah. you know what i mean and i don't know if it given my cha- my immune system a chance to recover or whatever and i haven't been sick since we restarted as well yeah and i would be i'd get a cold at least twice a year mm. you know so i i found that kind of mad because someone else said like, I, I didn't get sick yeah and I was saying it's probably just because we're not interacting yeah. with each other as much it's as well true. we're not know? in each other's faces though. which is funny isn't it i uh Kids are kids are hilarious, right? Because the kids are almost st- obviously down through their parents and their their um their relatives and things like that. They're so attuned to what they should be doing. So you you talk about training pods. We give them a square each when they come in. I do the kids class. I know I've said it on here before, but we do we give them a square each, and there's a square between them. But they stay in it. Like I'm talking yeah. about the young lads and the young girls. Every every one of them stay in it. Um one of them came up to me and said is this is this okay to do this because yeah. you know the, the social distancing they're all know what they're doing when when we tell them at the end of the class right nobody leave their square until um say me and jane go outside the yeah the, and we give them hand sanitizer and a stamp which they get at the end of the class they don't leave it then they line up and they put out their hands and they know exactly it's yeah. all like one of the little kids one of the younger ones said to me yesterday oh this is for COVID 19 <laughs> isn't it he's rubbing it back <laughs> it's just amazing to see such young kids so attuned to it yeah you know? i think it's actually the difference in the kids in the three or four months or whatever that we had off was astronomical like mm. we've kids coming in and it looked like they're about three years <laughs> older <laughs> but true. not just the way they look as well i think their behavior mm. has changed as well agree, like yeah. it's it's night and day like you were you know they'd come in and you'd look on the mat and it would literally be like they'd be legging around oh, like yeah. they're just having a crack playing chess or whatever but now they're just all sitting there as soon as they yeah. walk in they're all on their knees they're keeping distance from each mm. other and you're kind of like so this is all we needed huh? <laughs> we, just needed we should this. have pretended this happened years ago and the kids would have been really well behaved yeah I, <laughs> like i would second that completely the kids um making up viruses yeah <laughs> <laughs> but they yeah oh, there was that moment there is that moment in class where we play um what's the name of the game stampede infected. is it oh infected yeah, yeah and of course i or maybe it was oshin shouted out okay we're playing infected and then we realized we can't, yeah, use, that can't use that word anymore yeah so we use like zombie as whatever yeah, it was. Zombie, but, yeah, uh, yeah just those moments of like oh they know what that is yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. um how um helpful has heather been over the last because we got to give props yeah so I suppose like not very Anna <laughs> when it comes to business like Heather's um, she's I'd be more creative but Heather is really like she's probably I'd come up with ideas but Heather make the idea if you know that kind yeah. of what I mean she's really like from she, academic style she comes at everything from a you know there wouldn't be never be an apostrophe missing or a mm. comma I don't even know the difference between the two <laughs> I know what a joke but uh, oh, nah, yeah. no she's like I'm not going to I always like her I always say she's pessimistic but she's just it, it's like she wants to make sure everything's done right mm. and she'll always be the devil's advocate for me if I said we well, should do this and then she'd be like well but that might not work as bad blah 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 mm. you know that kind of way so some of it I do give her abuse about and I'm sure she's going to listen to this back so she's going no no <laughs> but she's so you're she would you you'd be creative and she'd be kind of very productive very, yeah would she be very like you say she's pessimistic and stuff is it is it more no, like realistic like, yeah, yeah i slag her about being pessimistic but yeah. she that's what she that's actually her response is i am a realist yeah <laughs> I, look yeah. i think all pessimists i say that too yeah. and i know i'm a pessimist yeah. but i'll say realist but she it is that and it, it's funny because i could have a hundred good ideas in a mm. week and then like well i think they're good at the time anyways and then we kind of go through them and it's like right just pick one for the minute and like even the last time we spoke on here it's funny because you were asking me what's next it's like i'm actually finished 
coming up with new ideas for mm. the minute because I want to make everything the best we can. Yeah, yeah. And Heather does keep me answerable on all them jobs. Like if I'm supposed to do something or you know that kind of way, she'd make sure I'm making sure everything's up to scratch mm. and she wouldn't be afraid to tell me, oh, that should be done better or yeah. you know that kind of way. And as much as sometimes I'm like, shh, <laughs> it, it obviously helps because we can yeah. still keep things to a very high standard you know and I think every business needs a header if yeah. you know what I mean someone who's watching over and you know but when Heather's in her own job she's a machine mm. she works from the morning to the evening but when she's doing stuff for the gym it takes longer and I think sometimes it's because she puts herself under so much pressure to make sure yeah. it's perfect and the funny thing is, is that her work her her work in work is always perfect mm. but it's just that when she's doing it for the gym because it's ours she puts yeah. herself under more pressure yeah. you know like something that I would assume would take 10 minutes she could be there for an hour and a half doing yeah. it I'm like what's taking you so long and but she just wants to make sure it's absolutely 100 percent perfect yeah you know what she's, I mean? she's right too like yeah because if you, like it's your livelihood and you know along the line obviously yeah two of you're gonna get married eventually and then huh i didn't mean they eventually there <laughs> that, that actually came up maybe not know, as soon as i said that i was like don't say eventually but you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah down the line and, and i think she's right to do it and and you you told me that the the numbers in the gym are you've, you've nearly back to yeah we're like i I, I think a big thing to that is, is when we were speaking earlier, it was like when we we're allowed to reopen, what are we going to do? And I actually think Dermot contacted me from 3MS mm. and he was like, do you want me to do a video for you? And we got that done up in the first week and I was just like, I'm not, like and I had obviously contacted back all, all all our old members and everybody just seemed to come back. Like, yeah. uh, anybody who could come back has come back. And then even, we just said we already spoke about, but like a week and a half or two weeks ago when the kids class there back, like that was such a great buzz to see them mm. all coming in as well. And hearing from the parents saying like, oh, Jack is mad to get back mm. in there and stuff and then seeing them because the kids are such good fun. Like they're yeah. so funny, like, yeah. you know, and some of them are so witty. Yeah. It's like having a conversation with your granddad or something, <laughs> you know. But yeah, no, and, and just seeing everybody come back in, it was just, it was an unbelievable buzz, mm. especially what we were talking about. You're like, well, every, like we are going to have to close. Will everybody come back? You mm. know, that kind of, a, worry, yeah. there is them moments in your head and you're just like, just have to keep doing everything right. You have to keep getting back to the standard that we set for ourselves. And I feel like we're we're doing that really well across the board now. Mm. Some classes that were less busy f are now busier than ever, you know. And uh, unfortunately, we have a problem because we have a booking system. And sometimes it does be booked up and people yeah. will be texting me. It's like, there's nothing I can do because obviously we have to keep the numbers down mm. for the COVID yeah, yeah. measures. And people are like, yeah, but can I still come? And you're like, no, I can't let it's you come hard. now, you know. It's hard to do it. Like. So it's like, obviously, we're happy that classes are booked up mm. or whatever. But also, you know, it's great to see everybody coming in and wanting to train mm. and, you know, that kind of way. So, yeah, I'm not really happy where, where we are right now. Mm. I, I feel like, you know, if we can just keep this going or whatever. And then the other thing is, is that we were talking about being a problem solver. When I seen the other counties close, I immediately came up with a fallback plan. Mm -hmm. We will be able to teach classes outside again. Mm -hmm. I have an idea for our classes. I have an idea for jujitsu. I have an idea for kickboxing. I have an idea for our kids' classes. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel like we're ever going to have to stop teaching classes again right. now. So that's my, un unless it's a lockdown lockdown, which is say, listen, you can't even go outside. Mm -hmm. Which is not gonna, I don't think yeah. that's going to happen. I don't think the country would stand for that again. It'd be a bit strange, but yeah. th that's great. Like, and uh, like, I'm, I, it's to be like I've spoken about this obviously on, on the podcast before and on the live stuff about like how much I enjoy being there, being in there. Like on a uh, Monday and Friday now, I'd be there from from ten to to six really. Like, um, and it's just an, I I like being in that place and that's massive like you know because mm. i'm a moany person and i don't like being in a lot of places but it's great it's great to be back and uh, to see all these like you say see all these people come back and and how um how much joy do people have in there like because that's what it's supposed to be isn't it like it's not supposed to be a place where you dread going to yeah i think i i would certainly feel um uh, this way about a normal like a, a gym gym in yeah a, in, maybe in a hotel and i i spoke to someone recently in in crossfit about that how it was very much a struggle to get there like because it was just a kind of a battle in your own head to go in whereas it's not the same as going into fusion and crossfit in there and jujitsu because you know you're gonna have some crack in there yeah and all those things so to have that back for me personally it's it's very beneficial you know from a head it's hard to explain that to someone either who mm. has never been in that atmosphere or environment yeah 
first of all, if you come to us, you come for coaching anyway. So yeah, so it's a completely different environment to say the sports center. Mm. And I'm not going to say like where you're just a number to them or whatever, because I suppose that's an insult to them because their coaches do care as well, but they might not be paid to coach a lot mm. of the time. You know that kind of way. Yeah. And that's why I, I try and do that with our coaches. Like this is your actual job mm. here. This is your primary position is to coach. Everything else is like secondary or peripheral where we have say the class are 45 minutes long. People come in and I may, we want to make sure that Derek says that you may at the end. Oh, this is what I was doing well today, and this mm. is what I, yeah. you know what I mean. This was I'm not gonna say we mistake I was making, but this was the mo point today that I need to improve on. Improve, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean. And I feel like that that people can kind of step away and say, oh, this is why I'm doing this, opposed to going to a gym by myself where yeah. I'm not being. If you wanted not to be talked to or corrected on or or coached as mm. well, you know, that's what you would be doing. Yeah, you know yeah, that kind perfect, of way, like yeah. you know. But I remember uh, just talking about the interaction and being enjoying to be there, kind of like that kind of a. Subject. I remember during the lockdown, I ran into one of the other coaches. Like we didn't arrange to meet or whatever. He was in one part of the gym, and I was over the far side, and I was mm. just doing some. But we ended up chatting for a few minutes, and it was just saying, like felt like such a treat to have human contact. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and we were, I, me and my friends were doing all the Zoom parties, and we were playing cards mm. and all this kind of stuff. We, and I, I'm going to be honest, that was actually fun as well. But actually meeting, get an invite actually that, meeting somebody, I actually did suggest it to the coaches yeah. group. I oh, said sorry. about playing poker or whatever, so no one seemed to oh, take you, it. You, yeah, I don't know how to Everyone play was like, yeah. I don't know how to play. Ah, sure, it would have been, but you probably would have won. That's the <laughs> thing. <laughs> I'm not a betting man, yeah. but uh, just to put this out there, I have bet twice for Martin and won both times. <laughs> I only like betting on myself now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, leave it at that. Like. But yeah. yeah, it's it is that interaction was it's so strange for it to be taken away yeah and then to be because obviously it was just me and Anne all the time and we kept each other going an awful lot um, I would have struggled a lot if I was just living on my own yeah but like when when you get out there like it's like um, I suppose it's like a kid walking into um, Jump for Joy or something yeah it's almost that experience of like something completely new and you're looking at all the kind of the equipment around you and the people and it was just uh, it was a real relief I think I think there stage. was a lot of stuff taken for granted you're like yeah. oh maybe I'll go nah what about I go and train you know this kind <laughs> yeah, of that's true, and then true. train and then you're not allowed to train you're like what yeah. you know funnily enough since lockdown ended I actually started doing some running we that's talked right. about it yeah. yeah and it was like everyone's like oh you started doing that during lockdown I was like actually no I didn't <laughs> and I, I, I'm not sure what kind of drove me on to mm. do it I think it's that I don't like not being able to do things mm. so I was like I'm going to do a bit of running here and I'll do 5k and sure the first day I did 5k and the second day I did 5k third day I think I did 7 or 8 and then I was like I could probably do 10 you know that kind of and then the time I did 10 I ended up actually doing 11 because of whatever way it was I, ter route. I terribly planned out the route <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be honest I did I went from 5 to 10 in a, well the 11 in a week and I couldn't walk for two or three I'm days tired. after. I was like, that was silly, you know. So yeah. I'm actually running eight. I'm back running AK now again at the minute. And How are you liking it? You're... I'm enjoying it, yeah. yeah. Like if I if I'm eating well, mm. I'm I'm enjoying it. But then I was telling you yesterday, we went uh, and had some food on uh, Saturday mm. up in Dublin, and then uh, no one was asking for you up there, but uh, I'm sure there was somebody, <laughs> one or two people. You're Derek's friend. And, Man uh, only uses me in Dublin when he's in trouble. He gives. <laughs> <laughs> you're a street cred <laughs> and uh, we went to the Mad Egg so if anyone has a chance to get there uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything but it's <laughs> just some really good food and then, the podcast <laughs> and then the next day I went to the Villager and I'm kind of sponsored by them but they do amazing food and yeah, it's local and then I ran on Monday morning and uh holy I was it, I was funny because I did the same route on the Friday that I did on the Monday but on Monday, like, it was like, I just couldn't move. Yeah. My body was sore. From about three minutes in, my yeah. whole body was aching me. And I was getting like, you know, you're running and your heart is thumping. And you're like, yeah. I really can't run any faster here. You know, that kind of way. Like, and then you're exactly halfway from home. So there's no easy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I'm happy I went out going because I actually felt better than for the second session I did yesterday of uh, Jiu-Jitsu. Jiu like, yeah. Like, like you say, you, were, you came back to it. And I do think... Um, I talk about running too much probably so i won't go into it uh but yeah for me it's 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 amazing and uh yeah i think everybody should at least try it because it, it's very hard to describe the buzz you get from it yeah um, you know the endorphin buzz i suppose uh it's very uh it's a strange feeling but it's a very nice one and that nice tiredness you know the tiredness you get yeah. when you've done something rather than when you when you did something my father's sitting at home listening to this going done something um <laughs> but uh yeah it's um it's great runners and and this is right so i listened back to uh, the podcast yeah I tortured myself by listening back right and uh, i didn't get to ask you because i suppose in the podcast over the last maybe 10 15 episodes 
at the end of it, be kind of talking about like what you like to do yourself. And, yeah. And I didn't really get to t talk about that with you the last time. So outside of you know martial arts and things, and even training, I suppose in mm. general, what do you like to get up to? I play computer games actually, mm. but yeah. I, now that being on it, I I go through stages of mm. playing computer games. Like where someone to give me a good game, I'm playing this new Japanese samurai one. So, so I, I went back and watched that uh, Tom Cruise film. The Last Samurai. How is he the last samurai? And a to be honest with you, from like I'm convinced I'd be a very good samurai. <laughs> Just because of the code of ethics, you know. I know, but uh, it's, <laughs> some of you might have heard of it, but it's called Ghost of Tsushima. It's actually classic. Like, is Jack playing that now? Jack might be playing. I think yeah. Ryan is also playing it because we were chatting about that as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's very, very good. But I go through stages where I could play it. And I definitely, uh, the computer is a big one for me during the lockdown mm. where it's just like something I could be doing at home that I wouldn't usually get the chance to, to do and we could be I might go for four weeks or five weeks mm. and I wouldn't be able to play the PlayStation once or whatever because we're just busy a lot of the time and people probably don't see that they only see it for the two or three hours that or well they wouldn't even see that most people see it for the 45 minutes mm. and probably think you're doing not a lot else but and if I'm 100% honest when we ran the gym for the first couple of years it nearly was that because we didn't actually have daytime class we just had evening class right. so I had a lot of time off because I was tra planning on uh, training full time and then uh, like you're when you're running a gym and it's busy you can see that there's so much more work that was needed like there's follow-ups and you know what i mean content and programming and making sure everything is things so sometimes i wouldn't have days or time to myself and it's not like you'd be like from the moment you wake up in the morning but it's just always the next job always the next job always the next does that kind of make yeah. sense so like i wouldn't always get a, a time to play it as i'd like to but when I'm, I find the really good thing about the computer is, and I'd say a lot of self-employed people are like this, and maybe, you know, someone like yourself who's an overthinker as well. When I'm playing the computer game, I'm thinking about nothing else mm, but that yeah. computer game. And I'm, uh, Karen, actually, Karen McNally, I had him on a few weeks ago. Mm. He sent me a video there the other day. I'll actually send it to you if you yeah. want to watch. But it was about people are like dopamine addicts. So we do, and like social media is a big dopamine one. Mm. And uh like just loads of dope in mean, things like coffee and you know that kind of alcohol yeah. and you know all that kind of stuff and uh he was kind of it was saying like how to come off it now i i i did give up coffee for a week me and yeah. we were chatting about it but i my i think my body just needed a bit of a rest but then the other part is is my phone is a big one for me mm. but my phone's nearly gone 24 7 like and i'm yeah. happy about that i'm not complaining about yeah. it but i definitely need to do a mobile phone detox one day a week mm. or something so i need to get all my jobs done on saturday so i can put the phones down face down on sunday yeah and it just leaves them alone you know that kind of way. it's pretty hard for you though because you've also got the you know the people who who are doing the the, the diet plans and things yeah. like that and they can they can contact you whenever they, they mm. need to I wish they contact me more. I'd always be nice. Yeah. You haven't talked to me in a week. What's your problem? Like, you know? Well, I suppose that's just the person on the other end thinking I don't want to bother him. You know? uh, that's actually the way I put it as well. It's like, yeah. If you think you're bothering me, yeah. that's okay. I don't mind that. Like, I'd rather if you consider yourself bothering me but getting results mm. than not bothering yeah, exactly. me and not getting results, you know? Do you think then, right, when you, you say you don't, maybe you don't get a chance to play um, a computer game for four mm. weeks, but don't you think that makes it even more enjoyable if you're playing something all the time or doing something all the time you kind of you lose that little bit of enjoyment yeah you know yeah and i think it makes it just that little bit more sweet it is and like that's actually a good way to put it because when you're training and like eating real healthy or whatever if you have a chocolate bar once a week that chocolate bar tastes really yes, good really. like you know what i mean like yeah. you're eating that chocolate bar, you just never knew how much you appreciate that chocolate bar but if you're eating it every day yeah it's so you're just kind of just chomping through it like yeah, you would yeah. like a potato nearly you know yeah. that kind of way. it's mm, just that chocolate bar yeah, you know that kind like of but yeah well yeah. when you didn't have chocolate in a while like i i any of the fighters out there like uh when you're cutting weight or whatever and like you have a drink water for me because i was big for my weight division i wouldn't drink water for the 24 hours before the day before yeah and i mean like my lips would be dry and i'd look like i'm dying or whatever mm. And then I get that first, and I used to have this drink I used to make up. It was like a protein powder with um, electrolytes and power red, and it was just tasted unbelievable. Like when as soon as it touches your lips, you're just like, "Oh my god!" Yeah, you know. So, yeah. so uh, not that extreme, but yeah, that's the kind of feeling you get. You're also a big man for uh, for documentaries. <laughs> Big man, yeah, yeah, big, <laughs> big man. You, but you do love a good documentary, yeah, yeah. You have, you have, you have a fascination. I talked to, I think I mentioned it to be with the with the mafia, the mob kind of, yeah. Is it is it something that you've always like aspired to be? <laughs> I think on some level, maybe in fusion, we are. I ah, know. No. I think 
when I was growing up, I think I might have watched The Godfather, which yeah. is funny because obviously that's a fictional one. And yeah. then Goodfellas and Casino, mm. and then Sopranos came out, and I just love all them yeah. shows. I think it's, I think it's fascinating, yeah. you know. And funnily enough, the code that they live by is absolute bullshit because they're all ratting each other out left, right, <laughs> yeah, and centre, you know. But it is. I just find it fascinating, and I, I think I'm surprised no one's made one a better f- series or documentary about kind of like the start of it, which is you, you know, Lucky Luciano mm. and putting together the, f- the families and all that. I know that there's been a few films made. Um, Christian Slater was in one of them. Yeah, yeah. That's like, not good. <laughs> no, it's watchable and it'll make you yeah. interested in the story. But it's not. You're not like, wow, well, this should. S- as soon as you said Christian Slater, yeah, he was kind of a big deal <laughs> then, though, huge, wasn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm surprised no one has done something like that. And I actually thought that Boardwalk Empire could have span mm. off. And I, because I remember watching the last season, and I was like watching them talk about Al Capone and Lucky Luciano yeah. and a few of them I was like jeez there's so many good years left in this and then someone goes this is the last season I was like oh no <laughs> I think you know that um, I feel I don't even know if it's com- if it's out yet but um, Tom Hardy is, is Al Capone in his later years and I watched the trailer and it's just one of the worst trailers uh, trailers I've ever and seen. And the film is, and I oh, really, you saw the film? yeah, yeah. Oh right. I didn't get through it all now, to oh, be honest you know? with you, because well. I was keeping hoping that it was gonna somehow spin back to mm. him being younger or whatever. And I understand maybe that he didn't want to make a generic Al Capone film or whatever, but it's terrible. Yeah. You know, and I really like Tom Hardy. But yeah, I do. Too. He's made some howlers. That one reason yeah. the car is a bit mad as well. Like. I like that one though. Lock is Lock, Lock. is his, yeah. I, I actually really like that one. It's actually the one time that Tom Hardy's done an accent where I've gone. Oh, he's Welsh. <laughs> Every other time, I'm like, "Where is he from?" You know, like he, yeah. like the Al Capone. I only heard the trailer. He was mumbling a bit. You've got Bane in the in the Batman film, and then you've got um, even in the Revenant, his accent yeah, is yeah. all over the place. Yeah, but I do think he's a very good actor. He's just not good at accents. Yeah, that's, and that's fine. Um, you also like you will watch a, a political um documentary now and again. My my the things i like to watch is kind of like my music test mm. like i nearly listen to anything yeah. or watch anything you know we we're talking yesterday but i watched the clinton affair and i've mm. thought that i will obviously I was very young at the time yeah but you, you'd forget just how controversial it was mm. you know what i mean and then it's nearly very similar to what's going on with donald trump right now isn't it you know that kind of way and that's it's it that's fascinating to me and then looking at some of the stuff that was going on with bill clinton and how he got away out of here say like, what the heck I think America's big business, isn't yeah. it? And people are happy because that's what kept coming up. Is like I don't care what he does in his personal time as long as we're making yep. money, you know. Oh yeah. Uh, so that was my uh, uh, that's a Tom Hardy side American accent there, but uh. I think Tom Hardy could play Bill Clinton. <laughs> that. But I, I do I, I I do agree that it is big business and you know capitalism reigns and stuff. But yeah. you know I was watching uh, a few days ago there was like a clips of Fox News. I know it's not the best channel to kind of follow. Yeah. But I was watching clips from it. And there was a couple of people on it, like a couple of the, the pundits on it were almost suggesting that maybe the elderly people should kind of sacrifice themselves for the for the good of their grandkids and to move big business for, forward, open everything up and don't worry about it, old people. You know, if you pass away, you've done it for the good of the country. And that's not me adding and making it sound like it's more over the top than it was. That was what the guy was saying or the couple of guys were saying. Yeah. It's a very strange country when you're saying that on... on a very popular network yeah national news yeah. yeah um i actually watched that um the loudest voice with russell crowe where he plays mm-hmm. roger ailes and it kind of goes into all that like it sounds like it was bonkers now from what the the program depicts they were trying that's when they were getting rid of him they're trying to take it into a a, a more what's the word i'm looking for neutral mm. kind of point of view yeah, when yeah. he was very he had when he was someone was going for president he had his favorite and that's the person they were going to p- bring all the publicity mm. to when when they were because i think it was about he hated obama and uh then the same thing when trump was looking to get in he went he was giving trump all him and trump were pals and yeah. he thought he was going to get a white house position and everything I, even after everything that happened yeah. like you know what i mean so i found that fascinating but there was loads of stuff in that so if anybody's any interest in that kind of thing i did find that one really fascinating i actually watched uh bombshell first i like Bombshell, and that's kind of like you, you just need this one thing to kind of trigger off something and mm. like who's this guy or what's mm. he getting up to and then suddenly it was like we're watching the a part yeah. next and the two of them tied in well together which is funny because um uh, nicole kidman and naomi watts are mm. best friends and they play the same character yeah so, yeah and i don't think it's the first time no, they've tied in together like yeah, that before, they have haven't they? they've they've crossed <laughs> over definitely a couple of times um i what i liked about bombshell uh um, what's her name? Oh, Charlize Theron. Charlize Theron, right? Yeah. She looked very like Megan Kelly. The makeup they did, yeah. they did on her. 
they invented the the Margot Robbie yeah. character to kind of kind of put her in the in that position that the others were in before. But it's very much a a true sto- true yeah. true story. Obviously, some of the uh, dialogues between characters you can, you have to make something up in yeah. it. Yeah. But Ailes like was was particularly uh, like a proper monster, really. Mm. And I watched a documentary, and I texted you the other day with the name, but I can't remember what the name of it was. But um, Divide and Conquer was it? No? That's what it was. Yeah, and I, and I downloaded it. Did I'm, you? Yeah, I haven't watched the channel. I mean, when you see the stuff he was getting up to, like, and I mean, yeah. it's not just about the sexual and assaults and things like that. It's about how he created this monster of Fox News and how yeah. much of a not that he created it was Murdoch, wasn't it? But he was like the main man who was putting out this content of especially they really got bigger on the Obama thing, yeah, because they hated I, Obama. That's where it came in that he wasn't even American and everything. Yeah, he had to prove birth certs and everything. And who was in charge of the birtherism? Who was the main man putting it out there? Donald Trump. Ah, uh, he no, was the main yeah. man. And and he did it the other day with Kamala Harris. The, it's mad, isn't yeah, it? Some of the stuff that goes on, you're like, how did he get away with this? Yeah. But the fact that Donald Trump got in there after the stuff he was saying was, the week before, like I was sure he's finished now. That's no way he can. Oh, and then he still done. gets in. Oh, the it, bus thing. Yeah, yeah, the bus thing, yeah. Oh, uh, locker room talk. Yeah. That's not a get out of jail key free guy for a president, hey, look, like. We, we, look, I, imagine, I would never say that to you. Yeah. I just wouldn't say it. It's a weird, weird thing to say. Um, He said weird things about his daughters. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah I'd be with her if she was my daughter. What? Who says that? That's mad, isn't it? Who says that? I think, I don't know what's going to happen. The, the polls are closing in the swing states. They're yeah. getting a bit tighter, like 1%. I was talking to my dad yesterday, who follows it very, very closely. He looks and like he's behind and he definitely feels like he's under threat or anything. Yeah. And now he doesn't have the Cambridge Analytica stuff yeah. either. Like, as it came out afterwards, they were doing all the adverts about fake news That's on right. Hillary. Like. That's right. And, but maybe this is the postal thing. That's what he's... Yeah. It, this is his new Cambridge Analytica thing. I, I just worry... <clears throat> I worry... I, I remember talking to my dad the night before the election, the last election... And we kind of said, oh, you wake up in the morning and Hillary will be president. And we kind of laughed. Yeah, that's like, what we all thought, though. And I said, oh, but what if it was? And we laughed again in the kind of, yeah, of course it's going to be. And then when you wake up and you find out, and it, I'm, how is it still happening? It's so weird. Yeah, it is literally like a reality TV program. Yeah. And the stuff he comes out with to the, <laughs> to the press and the yeah. arguments he has, you're, you're embarrassed for him. Like I remember watching... Um, I can kind of draw slight parallels. I remember watching uh, Fahrenheit 9-11. You yeah. know the one, the Michael Moore one. And there's three occasions where Bush says these ridiculous statements, right? He messes up one at the end. So, and anybody could do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. he made a couple of st- really ridiculous statements. Th- that was three things in a film. And we were like, how the hell was he president? Yeah. And now you look back at him now, you're thinking, that man is... There like- was three things last week, I think, from Donald <laughs> Trump. Well, it was the Spanish flu dead. Yeah. Ending the World War Two. I think he said. Yeah, he got that wrong. And then there was another thing as he well. Like, ev- ever, yeah. like, everything wrong. And, he, and I saw something, he did something last night or the night before where it was just, it's just shambolic. He can't yeah. speak properly. He, he, um, every, he can't read off the teleprompters because he's not great at reading, I suppose. But... Uh, Anyway, he probably this, thinks he knows better anyway. Yeah, look, he's probably the best reader in the world. You know what he says. Yeah. I'm I I'm probably the most racist person you've ever, the least racist person you've ever met. That's what he said to someone once. I was like, wow, she has met very few people if that's the case. But um, it was like such a touch of class with Barack Obama, the yeah, way he carried himself, mm. the way he operated, and then to go to Donald Trump. Yeah. The country took forty years back, like really did, yeah. For economical, you know what yeah. I mean? Like and that and he's supposed to be the one that was gonna look after that side of it. He was yeah. gonna, he said he was gonna run it like a business. Yeah. And he didn't. But is he is he making rich people richer though? Because yeah. peop some people are happy, but yeah. it's not the people who you know what I mean, the majority know well, I don't know enough about it, but it seems like people are happy. But not everybody, you know what I, you know what I'm trying to say. He made something like uh, I might get these figures wrong, but he made 328 million people, or sorry, 328 millionaires over something like 700 billion dollars over right. the last three and a half years yeah. in office. But then you look at the other end of the scale, and they're poorer. Yeah, you know, worse off. Than the lower are. class are getting lower. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And you know, sad. I hope it is sad, and like they're never looked after the poorest people. It just doesn't happen. You think yeah. they're going to be, and someone's going to talk about it and say, "Look, well, Joe Biden might come out and say, look, it, it just won't.' It just it's doesn't work." I, that way. It did seem to me that Barack Obama was trying to make a humanitarian mm. difference with, like Obamacare and all this other stuff. But it's 
and then maybe there was certain promises made about certain things he was going to do, but you can't get everything done either. No, no, there's not. You know what I mean? It's impossible. Like, yeah. yeah he took them out of recession, like, and he, he had them back on track. And, you know, the problem, uh, the problem with the American system, well, there's a lot of problems. I think just the one, just the two sides is, is bad. It's never a good thing. But, like, Barack Obama was hamstrung by, I think it was six years of having um, you had the Senate as. Republican. Yes, yeah, so you could do nothing, do nothing anyways, yeah. Every time they'd yeah. never vote with him. Yeah. Even if it was for the greater good of the country, they wouldn't They'd just go. go against the other crowd just for the it's thing, so, isn't it? Yeah. It's so but it's that's the It is strange. It's terrible. Having yeah. two two just two sides, um we're we're not far off it really, but yeah. um but just having two it sides. It is a strange times in Ireland with the the power sharing thing as well. Never gonna work. I think Leo got out at the right time as well because there is a good taste left in your mouth about, yeah. about Leo because of uh, everything he did during COVID. And then the other crowd are coming in now, and it's, this is the aftermath. This is the hardest yeah, part, I part. think. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, we're okay, we're gonna do something hard, but then you're hoping at the end that it'll be over and we're back to normal. But we're we can't be, mm. and now they're left to deal with that part. Yeah. And it's like, no, they're not really doing good enough. And maybe, maybe no one ever could either. You know that kind of. A, I definitely, not. definitely feel like there could be more done on the testing thing. That's just my view on that. But I don't think there's a perfect perfect answer to yeah. anything where everybody's going to be happy you know that kind of way, so i think like you say it about about leo like he, he did come out smelling fresh and sometimes it takes a really bad thing to happen mm. for it for a for like i remember do you remember in, after 9 11 actually um, yeah rudy giuliani came mm. out looking so he was like they were calling him the mayor of america rather than the mayor of new york yeah he is a crazed man now i've seen him on chat shows he's absolutely and crazy. a great friend of roger yeah, a, a big friend of roger and donald and all yeah. the boys um yeah it's it's it, the power sharing thing never works we've seen it down through history in ireland um those coalitions and things like that just not going to work the green party will probably pull out and that'll that that's that's all it takes they're too busy sleeping anyway so it's all the one he was having a great nap <laughs> that was ridiculous and any i would assume in any other country in the world he'd be sacked on the spot like yeah uh, like uh, and then the fact of what the vote was it was like to increase minimum wage and he's panned out and voted against it yeah. uh here he's a he's a straight eamon ryan is a very strange character isn't he yeah i remember he used he used some really racist Yeah, I was actually going to say that, yeah, yeah. No, he wasn't using it to be racist. Yeah, I think in a clip, it was portrayed nearly, like we might see yeah, 10 yeah, seconds of it, yeah. and then you didn't know the context. But he wasn't doing that. No, but that. he wasn't being racist, no, but it was it was a racist <laughs> term, you know, yeah. Well, he could have just said, like, yeah. you know, a racist the, term. The N-word. <laughs> yeah, the N-word? it was the, the N-word, yeah. said that, just say that. Yeah. You don't have to, like, we we know what it means. Um. So anyways... We've we've solved all those problems. Uh, what's the plan? Derek for, for office. <laughs> yes, get me in there. What's the plans for the future? Not fusion related this time. Um, my plan. I just mm. I really just want to get back training, and mm. I was supposed to. You, I put a post. I was trying to think of like verbalize something, put it down on paper there. So I did it the other day, and I was like, I don't want this to be like really long or that. Mm. But and actually, I suppose we already touched on this one. It's just like whenever there's. You know, there's always an opportunity. So with one thing not being here, so like we'll say for jujitsu or kickboxing or cross, there's now there, there's always an opportunity somewhere else. So like now is a great time to improve on something that we're not good at. Mm. You know what I mean? So we we just say if it's MMA and the guys are good at striking, now is a really really good opportunity just to do grappling. Mm. You know what I mean? You don't have any. You can hit pads once or twice a week, but like let your mental focus be on improving on something you're not good at. You know, so my thing for myself at the minute is there is no competitions coming up, so I want to improve at everything. I want to get my weight down. I want to be fit and ready to go, but I'm the worst for killing myself all mm. the time. So I just need to take it easy because I do think my shoulder thing might have been a little bit of burnout mm. um, because I was training very hard by myself during the lockdown. But now, and so then we I only had, I don't know, a couple of weeks of actually training partners yeah. and I'm injured again. So I just want to like listen to my body better and, and just improve on everything and, 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 and like me and Heather have plans for next year or two so hopefully we can kind of pull all our stuff together on that and yeah yeah and it's exciting like I'm I'm really I'm on such a good buzz with the with the gym and yeah. everything that's going on with that because it's it it, it it is stressful you know what I mean and it, it's not I don't know if it's ever not going to be like where we're going to know exactly what's going to happen mm. even if there is a vaccine for COVID-19 or whatever maybe it'll turn out wasn't you know as bad as we thought and it's kind of just we need to watch the sick and the elderly yeah. or whatever but then you, we just you know what I mean it's so much fake news on yeah, it isn't there it is. like, yeah it's unfortunate I remember I asked uh, I was chatting to Josh and I mean I'm the morning I was chatting to Josh because I wanted I didn't want to tell him what I'd seen and I wanted is that to, Josh who was on this show twice yeah. he made a second 
the appearance before you made your second appearance. Yeah, and his combined numbers, I think, are less than my first. Ah, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, no, but I would, because obviously when you're chatting about something medical, mm. Josh is a good man to go to because he's probably usually ahead of the game. Well, better than myself and yourself, anyway. Sure. But I asked him, I said, uh, like, what do you think of, um, what do you think of, what's the, what's the general thoughts on COVID-19 now? And earlier in that day, I was after reading something. I was on like a legitimate news thing was saying mm. basically like oh the after effects of the COVID might be worse than the virus itself like your lungs are scarred and all this kind of thing and I was like Jesus that sounds fucking horrific and so I said it to Josh but I didn't tell him about the article and he was yeah. like I think people are realising that if you know what I mean that the vulnerable are in bother and then it's the sick and the elderly like but I, that the rest of us it's just a bad cold mm. and then I said the article to him you know that kind of way and then he was like yeah but I don't like there's not enough scientific research mm. out there for that and you're like why are these people saying it then? Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, and I, as soon as he said it, it made sense. Yeah. But then when you're reading, when I was reading the article at the time, you're like, this is absolutely insane. Do you know? Yeah, I think I, uh, I was in the same boat with a couple of other things. Fear. No, it wasn't yeah, that scare tactic. Yeah, it wasn't COVID-19 related, but it was something along the line. It was fitness related, we'd mm. say. Um, and he was just like, that's not, that's, yeah. where's the science? And that's what Josh is, that's his like business. That's what he's looking at all mm. the time. And that's what he should be looking at. And that's what we should be looking at. Not at some, you know, uh, someone's cousin on Facebook who's dreamt up something, you know. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's irrelevant. Um, and of course, you've got your two kids. You've got two kids at home, and yeah, already done. Lay and Cleo, beautiful, beautiful four-legged lads. babies, four-legged babies. <laughs> um, what breed are they again? They're blue Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Yeah, they're class. Actually, you know, like uh, when you, because I only they were at that gym once, and I got a, got a little yeah. rub. Like the but pure look, strength, yeah, is unreal. Like, and they look scary like people have yeah. a thing about them like I don't think mine do but obviously I see them all but one of them the bigger one like she could be in the other kit she'd be like a bit away from me and you know, she looks at you and she's kind of like and you'd be like you'd be terrified if you seen her and you didn't know But and she's the bigger baby like yeah. she's the less aggressive of the two like you walk along if I was walking along with her and she spotted you if you clock eyes with her she's waggling her tail going yeah. over to get a rub if you don't look at her she just like she stays looking at you until she walks past but she's so friendly yeah. like and then people rub her but she, as, if you rub her she jumps up she tries licking the face yeah, yeah. so like you know it's funny when I, I have to tell people like, she's going to give you a kiss now yeah. you know, but it's just a it's a reputational thing we talked yeah. about this people, did I say reputational that's not a word yeah. it's a reputational I'll let word. you off <laughs> thank you but it's there's all, there's a few dogs in, in a certain um uh, for, yeah, uh, breed yeah. that have a reputation and Bull we all, breed yeah, or, yeah yeah and we all, but we all know it's like um it's the nurture thing yeah. side of things is yeah. wrong and that's why it happens but they're beautiful they are beautiful dogs like yeah. but you just realize cuz they're not I thought they were going to be taller from the yeah, pictures right? yeah they look huge in pictures they look huge that's a big dog but the must the, yeah. the muscle and structure. the structure yeah. yeah um but they are beautiful and I obviously obviously pictures of headers puts up and <laughs> on Instagram and things it was just after I was after recovering from the concussion actually and I was uh, I was changing the wires in the telly and I, like so I have to move it from the PlayStation over to the to what we watch the channels on like mm. and as I was doing it she went underneath me like she's only about a thing and I look up and she jumps up and her head hits my head in the forehead and it was like getting it I don't know I've never got hit with a hammer yeah, but yeah. I'd assume it was like that and she never even blinked and I'm like looking, yeah. seeing stars and everything, like it was crazy. Just and then the she just walks off, massive. yeah. So anymore when I do that, I have my hand below me because I don't want to get hit again. <laughs> what is um, funny. Yeah, look, uh, that was a good chat, man. Yeah. Thank you very much. I really appreciate you coming over again. Absolutely, no problem at all. And uh, let's keep it going. Fusion, really enjoying it. Yeah. Um, I'll fly through these. Um, thank you to John, as ever, for putting this out. Um, tomorrow it'll be out, actually. Uh, to his family and to Megan to Jer my mother and my father and my grandfather who listened to the episode I did with my brother Simon and uh, he loved it it was his first full episode that he listened to so next up he's going to be listening to one with Mr. Calvin Doyle um, I'm picking I'm trying to pick them out in certain ones maybe we'll get around to Martin eventually but we'll see <laughs> um, yeah we're on YouTube we're YouTube channel obviously the weekly weekly subscribe if you haven't already that's very helpful and like the videos on there if you can uh, we're on Facebook the weekly weekly instagram is um under dead uh, what is it ah oh, you'll find it under the weekly weekly same it's twitter we're on spotify apple anchor all the other uh, podcast platforms thank you to everybody out there who's listened again um episode 29 it's kind of mad i said it's kind of at the end of every episode uh that's it cheers martin no problem at all uh thanks everyone for listening and uh we'll speak to you next week take care